Mr. Feininger, did you always want to be a photographer? No, <clears throat> that actually happened quite accidentally because uh, I was an architect. I started as an architect and worked as an architect for several years, but uh, those were bad times. It was just before World War II, and eventually I couldn't find work as an architect. So I did architectural photography for architects, and that's how, uh, how I got involved in photography. I was living in Stockholm at that time and started gradually photographing the city and eventually got the idea of making a book. So then I filled in with the pictures that I thought were important, that would make uh, uh, the book uh, typical of Stockholm. And there I got into trouble first because the best views were across water. I could never get very close to them. So I had to use tele photo lenses. In what year are we talking about? The year was 1934. What distance would you be? You would be away Oh, I was about, uh, I would say, three miles, at least. And uh, these are some more of these ship's pictures that are shot. And that's how I got, in, in particular, into telephotography. But uh, at that time, telephoto lenses were not available commercially, or else they were too expensive for me, so I built my own camera. Since we speak of telephotography, I want to show you a few, for instance, this is a picture of the Empire State Building seen across the meadows and across the Hudson River from a distance of about, of about seven miles. And uh, I found that the farther away you go, the more monumental this building looks. If you stand on Fifth Avenue a block away, the buildings next to you are actually obscuring this immense building because you're so close. So in order to get the feeling of it, I went all the way into New Jersey and shot this picture. Well, let's take this one, for instance. You see there are ships here, here and here, and you see they're quite small. Well, the buildings are very large, but if you take the same shot from a ferry passing by with a normal lens, your ships would be this big and the buildings this small. In other words, the perspective would be what I call unnatural, because the relationship between ship and building is not uh, what it is in real life. I would like to show you a few more telephotographs. This, for instance, is a picture of the uh, United States passing 40 se 42nd Street in New York. And again, you see tiny people here. I hope you can see that. They give the scale to the, to, the, to the ship, which is immense. Without this kind of scale, I feel you lose part of what's essential. And only the telephoto lens can bring it out because it doesn't distort. Here is a shot which I took on assignment for life of Coney Island on the 4th of July. And they wanted to show these enormous masses of people. And again, I felt only the telephoto lens would enable me to get this feeling because if you use a regular lens, you have to go, go too close. And you see a dozen people in the foreground, very large. <clears throat> and whatever is further away is too small to make any sense. And you get the distortion. The people close to you are much too big, and the, the ones far away are much too small. This gives you the feeling of masses, like ants swarming, which is what the beach of Coney Island is on the 4th of July. But what you were also seduced by is the pattern, isn't it? A certain abstract yes. pattern. Oh, I'm very, always very conscious of uh, what you might call composition. A picture has to have structure. It has to have a, a center of interest, and uh, it has to hold together. And it has to make a graphically interesting design, so to speak, that is terribly important to me. You'll you find in all my pictures. This is a shot of one of the cemeteries of New York, shot with a 40-inch lens. And again, you get the pattern of these tombstones. If you use a smaller lens, a shorter lens, with a standard, what you might call a standard lens, again, this, uh, the stones in the foreground would be much too big and the ones in, back, in the back too small. And you get something that looks like nothing, you know, ordinary, so what picture? When I look at those two photographs together, mm -hmm. I mean, you're obviously not interested in tombstones or the people. What, you're interested in what the effect. I want to get the effect of this immensity, the immense masses of people and the immense masses of tombstones, the size of the cemetery, you know, the colossal amount of dead bodies there, the feeling of it, you know.
But it also, you're also very yeah. interested in a formal problem. You're also, oh, because yes. it's almost like an abstract painting. Yes, very much so. But there, light is also very important. Oh, the, light. the play of Terrible. shadows and light on this yes. one yes. is, I mean, you must have waited a long time for yes. getting that relationship between darkness and light on yes. the photograph. You see, I'm enormously conscious of light, because unless the light is right, I don't shoot. Light is everything, in particular in black and white photography, where you work with light and shadow, and the shadows give you the feeling of depth. But Only it also gives you mood. Mood, very much, indeed. Yes, it is. And uh, I am very conscious of the, the position of the sun. For instance, in New York I know exactly when to go where, when the light is just right. Either whether I, whether I want light or shadow or side light, raking side light for the texture on buildings, for instance. So I'm very conscious of that. Because you always have to seem to have the dual problem. It has to look right, but it also has to feel right. But do you think this is what the eye sees? Actually, it is, because the camera can show you only what the eye sees. It, it does not create different perspective. But you see it at arm's length. You would see the same, this whole, the height of this picture in real life, seen at arm's length, like this, would be a quarter of an inch only. You see, and so you are not aware of it. But if you look, for instance, through binoculars, then you see it like the telephoto lens sees, and it is real. The eye sees everything in what we call rectilinear perspective. But with the camera, we have two additional perspectives, cylindrical and spherical. The cylindrical perspective we get when we use a panoramic camera with a swing lens. The spherical perspective we get when we use a fisheye lens. And the advantage is that we can encompass an enormous angle of view in one single picture. And this is a shot <coughs> that I'm particularly fond of. This was, as far as I know, the first time that any photographer ever used a 40-inch lens in the city to make close-ups. Because previous to this, they had used a telephoto lens only to get distant objects close, objects that were too far away to be seen clearly with a normal lens. But here, this could have been shot with any lens, even a wide angle. But I deliberately backed up about six or eight blocks and use the 40 inch lens to get this feeling of traffic jam, this feeling of cars stacked up tightly, one on top of the other, to give the feeling of New York traffic. And only the telephoto lens can give you this feeling. 